we, we had an active, thriving nursery industry here where people were producing hemlocks, it, you know, container hemlocks, hemlocks for hedges. You could go, there were probably 20 producers it, growing nursery stock of hemlock. When the Adelted came through, it killed that entire nursery industry. And I make recommendations as an extension agent all the time for, for folks who call and these days they're wanting to know what they can plant in the in the landscape for a hedge or for a buffer and I always recommend hemlock. Hemlock is that it had is just such a multi-purpose you know tree for the landscaping environment and they and they always ask about well the, number one they'll ask about the adelgid and these days we say it is a manageable pest. Wow. It is a totally manageable pest. Well where do I get where can I find some? And that's been it's hard. hard. It's hard to find People because the industry ditched it. When the Delta came through and wiped everything out, the industry, the nursery industry, some, some of it basically collapsed here to a certain extent. Well, you know what happened? The, the industry collapsed before we really acknowledged the Delta because, you know, because I overlapped with nursery, you know, all of a sudden it was like fields of hemlock were going unsold. People were like, they don't want them anymore. And we're like, they don't want them anymore, but very few people said, why? <laughs> you know, and then, but then we figured out it's because this Delgid got in to New England before it got here. Right. Our climate's very similar to New England, and that's why we grow a lot of hemlock. You can grow a six foot hemlock in, here in Western North Carolina in about half the time that you can grow one in New England because our growing season is longer. So I saw people in Jonas Ridge and over in Avery County, you know, shit, they would ship tractor trailer load after tractor trailer load of hemlock into New England. I mean, I saw people send their kids to college growing hemlock trees. No pests. No, you didn't spray them. You didn't do anything. You just planted them. You trimmed them. You fertilized them. You dug them. I mean, one of the most profitable trees you could grow. Um, and then a Delgin hit and everything turned around. There was a guy in the newspaper that, remember, he wrote an article on cutting his last hemlock stand down. I can't remember that guy's name. Anyway. Those are the fields we like, though, are the neglected hemlock fields that have a lot of Adelgid and branches that we can go in there and we can really collect a lot of predators. That's sort of what we call a field and sectory. And like at Virginia Tech, they purposefully planted trees and we're probably in the process of doing that ourselves as kind of a little area to raise hemlocks with a delgid and predator. So you could collect and redistribute. I mean, we, we'd love to see it come back, extension, so I could, I mean, there's there's a couple of producers that I know that have, they're growing some hemlock, they have some ball and burlap, you know, hemlocks for, for transplant, but there's, but there's very few, so. So it makes the price high. Prices are high. If you find so, them, yeah. you're, you're, you can sell yeah. them and they're So if you got to know anybody uh, you know, lands, in, in the landscaping or nursery production with an entrepreneurial spirit, it's the time, it's, it's ripe to, to, to renaissance that industry. And then there are the Chinese and Japanese varieties of hemlocks that are available mostly from Oregon and Washington. And the, I have a Japanese hemlock called Diversifolia in my yard. I've got a handful of them. I've, I got some Chinese hemlocks and they're immune. They don't get hemlock woolly adelgid because they evolved with hemlock woolly adelgid. They created immunity to it. Um, so if you ever see a Japanese hemlock or a Chinese hemlock, like at the mustard seed, where they bring in a lot of stuff from out west, um, diversifolia is a really cool uh, hemlock that would be a great tree for. Uh, nursery people to be producing because it has resistance. You don't have to, we don't need biological or chemical control for it. It's, it's built in. Um, and then the National Arboretum has created a hemlock that is genetically resistant by splicing genetics of eastern hemlock with genetics of Chinese and they now have a resistant, kind of like they're doing with chestnuts. You know, they've created this genetically resistant. Embossed so they words. bred it, right? They did not genetically modify and create it, correct? They, yeah. Okay. 
they bred oh, yes. Chinese in Carolina, and they naturally will hybridize. So they that's cross, how they did yeah, it. Yeah. They've never been able to do anything yet with Eastern genetics. It's just too hard. And then what they'd have to do is get a tree. Then you're going to have to grow that tree for 15 to 20 years till you get a cone, get that seed, plant it, and then grow that thing out to see if it's if that traits carried along. And that you know, and that's where all this. That's how this can go in so many different directions, you know. That's why they have three-day symposium about it. <laughs> and, you know, you can listen to all the different angles. Yeah. And what, where is this three-day symposium? Well, they haven't had one in a while. They haven't had one since 2010. Nancy Stairs, right here in front of me, and I, and Jonathan Hartzell, and Anthony Laboud had the last symposium that was held in Montreat in 2017. Prior to having it, we had to meet with the Forest Service and tell them what we were going to talk about because they were too scared that we were going to promote Laracobius nigrinus to the point that they felt that it didn't work. Now, they've eaten a lot of crow on that now. <laughs> but the government does their, you know, like when we were in Asheville, that was their second so that was the fifth. Here. That was the fifth. Oh, the fifth. That was the 2010 one. But yeah. they haven't had any since then because none of this has followed the party line between you and me, you guys in here. Is you know if it followed the party line, we could probably still be having this and standing in circles. But it turned out that this beetle worked, and they wouldn't accept that for years. So, but that's human nature. I'm just. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, this is what happens with any program of any value is at some point in time you have to break with the status quo and say we, we you know we're going to reject what we have there this seems to work and we're working from date it's a, yeah it's the it's evolution of science of, that's the science that's right that's why i showed it's the same the picture yeah. of the world that i showed right it's happening. back in the 1400s that was the whole world it was it's just this little map and it's obviously much bigger than that. some people are going to have to retire from government before and a new era is going to have to come in before some more acceptance right. and, and that little micro part of sure. this thing. I, I won't say I'm, I'm on a mission though with the ash. If any <laughs> any y'all out there want to see your ash, if you got a pretty ash out there. Show them your ash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I've got yeah. I work. You know I'm fortunate to be able to work uh, with people who have money to spend on trees and. At Elk River, and well, and I'll tell you this too, I, <clears throat> I didn't really know much about ash until I saw dollar signs hanging off of them, be, and this ash borer came in, because there's a tree at Elk River Country Club in the front yard of a property there, and I always thought it was a big oak or maple, and I drove by it all the time, and then when I started learning more about ash borer, I was looking for ash, which is a little, not as easy as hemlock to identify. Um, you know, this thing's five feet maybe in diameter. I mean, it's in the front yard, boom, it makes the property. I mean, it's a beautiful tree. It's old. Um, Dick has a, a, a big ash. I have a big ash. <laughs> <laughs> we, always, we always knew that. Uh, uh, he came up in the woods and I showed it to and, him. And like I said, you know, <laughs> we, when we, one time, when we were talking about it's ash. Inch, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. So Make a good t-shirt. That's uh, one of the things that we've learned from hemlocks is let's save these big mother trees. You know what I mean? Let's go out right now if you want to save the genetics of whatever X species. Boom. You know, we, didn't, we don't plant ash as an ornamental tree, but there are big ashes out there. There's probably some on App State's campus. You guys have been treating some ash. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things, you know, when they're gone, they're gone. You can't, you know, we're going to be standing and be going, well, why didn't we do something? Um, that's too late. Um, so, you know, if any of y'all know of anybody that has any ash trees that are worth saving, I think it's at worth, and, and like when we talk to the landscapers, you know, if they point out, hey, you got an ash, you know, it's, it's threatened. And even if that customer doesn't do something about it, at least it makes you look like a smarter than average uh, guy that mows the grass or does landscaping. Um, and, um, you know, there are people out there that, you know, uh, would like to save these trees. And they may not even know that they have ash, right. you know, in their landscape. Exactly. So, you know. 
that's my campaign. So this sort of concludes the kind of the, the, the formal program here uh, with extension at the at the conference center. Um, for those of y'all who who I'll let Dick give details about this afternoon, which is sort of a sort of an add on to this. That's really just going to be um, you know with with Dr. McDonald. But um, I appreciate everybody coming, and 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 hopefully now you're you're armed. You've met the Beatles now, and you're armed with some uh, some new information about uh, about the the successful integration of this you know wonderful biological predator that we have here in the high country now uh but what we'll do is uh you know dick if you can give some details but i'm, yeah. I'm assuming for those who want to continue this afternoon dick if you can provide details about this afternoon yeah what we're going to do the people that are interested here now we're going to drive over to banner elk and we're going to go to bella's pizza just to eat lunch and then about a little bit after one or whatever time we finish up, we're just going to go to the front gate of Grandfather, and they'll let us in. And when you go in, you'll come in, and you'll see the, the road that goes across the dam, and we're going to take that road, and we're just going to park at the clubhouse right there to start with and look around, and people probably say some stuff. But there are absolutely immense hemlocks in there that haven't been treated since 2007. So they kind of bear witness to the fact that if you're in a good spot and these trees are off in the forest like the beetle and the tree are supposed to be, you're done. Thank you all very much. There you go.